Hey, it's Sean from Tested. We are here in Boston at the MIT Media Lab where Forum Labs has brought us out for the unveiling of the Fuse One 3D printer an SLS benchtop unit at a reasonable price. This is a huge deal, as this has generally been inaccessible technology to most people. So we are actually going to get a in-depth, behind-the-scenes look at it, so let's go. We are here in Boston at Form Labs HQ to look at one of the biggest announcements in 3D printings for a long time, the Fuse One. The Fuse One is a giant deal because it's the first SLS printer that is accessible to like normal people. Yeah. <laughs> so Eduardo is the project lead for the Fuse One and he's gonna walk us through it. So Eduardo, yeah. tell us about the Fuse One. How long have you guys been working on this? Yeah, thanks. So we've been working on the Fuse One for uh, over two and a half years now. We've been working on it since before the Form 2 was starting up and we've been building this engineering platform the entire time and we're really excited to show off uh, the things we've been able to put together for you guys. Okay. And for those out in the tested audience who may not know, uh, explain SLS printing for us. Yeah, so SLS printing is a powder bed fusion technology. Uh, you take these nylon spheres that are about 50 microns in diameter, you spread those out over a bed and then you heat everything up to just below the melting temperature. Mm -hmm. From there, you hit it with a laser, scan the layer uh, on the bed, and then those spheres fuse together, which is why we call it the fuse one. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you have a cross section of a part and you can repeat that process over and over again until you have a fully 3D printed part. And explain, explain everybody the advantage of uh, the powder nylon yeah. printing because there's some distinct advantages right. of that over even something like the Form 2, which is using resin or FDM printers that have to have supports. Yeah, so there's two big advantages that you get with SLS printing. The first one is that you print parts out of nylon. Nylon is this like really flexible, strong material, so you can actually use these parts for like end use applications. We have like bike pedals and drill enclosures and all this stuff that we've been using internally that have been printed on the Fuse One. Uh, and then you also, since you're printing on powder, you don't have those support structures. You don't have to design those in. You also don't have to think about those when you're orienting your parts. Right. So you can just put them in the build volume. You can pack the build volume full of parts. You can get a lot of parts out. And you can even start thinking about things like production because of the lack of supports and how easy it is to clean up the parts afterwards. Yeah. So, for, for, so basically, with the, it's almost like archaeology when yeah, you're, you're right. digging the part out of a vat of powder. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to do some really intricate stuff that would typically be really hard to do with 3D printing because all that loose powder is just acting as the support itself. Right. And then the other advantage is you can then recycle all the loose stuff that you don't use. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. Let's take a look at a few parts out of the Fuse one, and then let's take a look inside the machine itself. Yeah, for sure. So this is one of those bike pedals. Uh, this is designed by one of our mechanical engineers on the team. And uh, this part, you know, you can mate it with other parts of assembly. So you can put this bearing in here, attach it to uh, a bicycle and ride it around without any problems. It's really strong. So to be clear, Edward, so with this, you could actually put this and use it on a bike. Yeah, one of because our engineers has been enough. riding to the office every day for a year with that bike pedal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, That's let's great. take a look at something else. Yeah, so since you can do really intricate uh, parts, you can actually Oh, I print. know what that is. Yeah, you can print <laughs> entire things in one go. So this is a, a design for a gauntlet that one of our engineers made for one of his cosplay. Uh, <laughs> things that he does. Oh, we're, we're well familiar with yeah, that Yeah, I think you guys know about yeah. that. Um, so this was actually printed as one part. So Whoa. this is not assembled, this is just printed in one go. You take it out of the powder, you brush it off, and you can start wearing it. And uh, you can finish this, you can paint it, you can make it look exactly like the one from the movie. And uh, it's, it's just a really amazing part that highlights the kind of thin features and intricate details you can get out I, of SLS. I, I was just gonna point out that some of the, like, this, like it that is me that is really thin yeah and there's not a lot of support that that is really strong right exactly yeah yeah it's super strong and since it's so strong and you can do these intricate things you can print things like this chain mail oh. uh, so this is just a little chain mail sleeve that we printed and yeah that's it's just as easy to print as uh, as anything else yeah and it's able to do this this would be almost impossible to print on any other type of printer. Yeah, I don't think I could imagine having to clean supports out of something like that. No. You would definitely end up breaking parts of it or it would just be a complete nightmare in terms of the amount of time you would take. All right, Eduardo, the prints are awesome. Uh, let's walk through how this all works. Yeah, absolutely. Because we have this mini fridge size printer here and I want to see the guts. <laughs> right, for sure. So the print starts by loading some powder into this hopper up here. You just pour the powder in, you have a cartridge for that. Then once you're filled up, uh, you can actually look in here 
you can see over here the the cartridge feeds down it's just gravity fed into this little trough right and then uh, on this side we have a roller and that roller moves back and forth and it spreads the powder out in on a the really top thin surface. layer really thin layer right okay. so you have this thin layer of plastic and then we have a bunch of heaters inside the system. And that's really the key to this process I, is I getting- I see the ceramic heaters Yeah, the there's top. infrared heaters, we okay. heat the air, and we even heat all the metal surfaces inside of this okay. to get uniform temperature. We wanna be about 10 degrees Celsius below the melting point of the material. So once you heat up to that point, uh, you turn on the laser and that scans the bed uh, to create the cross section of a single part. Mm -hmm. And then when that's finished, you drop down by one layer height, which is about 100 microns in this process. And then you recoat with more powder and then you repeat that process over and over again, where it's heating up and lazing and dropping and heating up. And the w so the way this works is we have the cartridge that we'll remove with the part in it afterwards. Right, exactly. And the part will be sus basically this whole can can canister will fill up with powder. Right, exactly. And our part will be in the middle. So right yep. here we have some parts loaded up. Yeah. It's the pedal, the, the right. bike pedal. Right, this is right? the bike pedal. So the really, one of the amazing things about SLS is that you can put a lot of parts in. So you can't, you don't have to just print one bike pedal you can actually print 27 pedals uh, mm -hmm. in this example in one build volume. So when that's done, you pull this build volume out, you uh, you clean those parts up and you have a lot of these pedals ready to go. Right, and, and, and this is because we're not worrying about support. We don't have to have this attached to the platform like right. other printers. Exactly. So we have, so basically here, we have just thin layers of powder in between all these that are supporting everything. Exactly, okay. right. In the same way that you can print these thin features, you can have large models just stacked on top of each other because of the uh, the powder in there. So what is the print volume that we can do on the Fuse 1? Yeah, so the, the Fuse 1 does uh, 165 by 165 millimeters by 320 millimeters tall. Good size. Yeah, pretty big parts. Yeah. yeah. And one of the problems you run into with the powder brace printing is the mess. Yeah, so, right, exactly. So I'm already seeing like you got this hopper set up. I'm seeing some things to try to, to to maintain, like yeah, contain that. Right, exactly. So what, what's the process after we've, we're done printing? Yeah, so when you're finished printing, you can unplug the cylinder from the printer, and then you can remove the entire build volume. So you don't have to push this powder up into the printer itself. You just take the whole thing out and move it over to the recovery station. And then from there, you can contain all the powder inside of that when you're cleaning your parts up. And uh, since the parts have to cool down, you can actually just pull them out and then put another cylinder in mm -hmm. and start printing immediately. Great. Yeah. And I see, it looks like there's a camera. Yeah, exactly. So when we were building uh, some older prototypes, we realized that having a window here makes it really hard to keep the thermal uniformity at the level that we want. Right. And so we decided we could just get rid of that window, put a camera in, those are not that expensive these days, mm -hmm. and just put a live feed of the print on this uh, great display that we have. And then you can watch your prints live uh, and you can also interact with them. And there's a bunch of cool stuff that we're developing around computer vision and part inspection while it's printing and all that kind of stuff will be coming out soon. Excellent. Yeah. So Eduardo, with the SLS printing, when you're basically laying down a whole sheet of powder yeah. and only part of that is actually melted together to form the model, yeah. how, how is it distributing more powder on top of that without disturbing anything below that? Right. Because you're talking about like what, microns. Yeah, 100 <laughs> microns, right. It's just two particle diameters actually per layer that All you're printing. All right, so how is it doing that? Yeah, so there's a couple key things. The first is, since we're at such an elevated temperature, the the particles that are sitting there, they're not loose and flowing. They actually like start to stick together a little bit. Okay. Uh, and that gives you some support, right? The other big one is that we don't apply any downward force when we're moving the new layer of powder over. Mm -hmm. So we have this roller in the printer and that is rotating the opposite direction of the travel as the as the recoder is moving back and forth, and that actually lifts the powder up a little bit as it's dropping it down. So you're just getting like a little sprinkle of powder basically with the roller instead of pushing powder down onto the surface. Eduardo, so you, have, you guys, Form Labs has a yeah. long history in lasers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is using laser. Is this the same laser technology, or is it using something different? Yeah, so we're using a very different laser technology actually in this printer. Uh, instead of the smaller diode laser in the Form Two. Uh, we're using a larger fiber laser, mm -hmm. uh, so it has uh, 10 watts of power instead of 200 milliwatts of power, so quite a bit more energy. Yeah. Uh, and then it's a 1064 nanometer wavelength instead of the 405 nanometer wavelength uh, that you see on the Form 2. Okay. Uh, so pretty different laser, but the same galvanometers and the same control system mm -hmm. that we use on the Form 2, we can use on the Fuse 1. Great. Yeah. And it's power requirements, are there any special power requirements for this? You're gonna no. need a special hookup. Yeah, we've worked pretty hard to make sure that this could fit on just a standard circuit. So you need a dedicated like 15 amp line, but okay. it runs on standard 120 volt AC. Excellent. Yeah. 
And right now, so th we've you've just announced the Fuse One. Is this right. its final form, or is there more work? Happening yeah, there's on? still going to be some more work going on. So we're still working on finishing up design for manufacturability, and we're going to be working with a bunch of beta partners mm -hmm. uh, this later this year. And so there could be some elements of the machine that'll change, but this will definitely be the capabilities that you can expect out of the machine. Right. Yeah. All right, Eduardo. We finished your print mm -hmm. now. Part of the problem with the powder-based printing is it it's messy. Yeah. Um, and what I've, I really like about what you guys done with the Fuse One is you've thought through the post-processing as well. Right. So what do we have right here? Yeah, so this is the Fuse One recovery station. Uh, the way this works is that you take your print out of the printer in that, that build cylinder, and you put that in the side over here. And then we have uh, this cable that connects the heaters and the motors inside the, the build volume. Okay. And that makes sure that you have the right temperatures, your parts need to cool down. And then it also is able to push all your parts out of the cylinder into this recovery area where you can actually clean your parts up. So all the, all the dust and the powder stays contained in this area right. and doesn't get all over you. And once the powder falls through this mesh, uh, you can actually put it down into this cartridge and you can mix that with uh, new powder, and you actually can print 50% used, 50% new powder, and that's what all the parts that you're seeing here are. So Great. you don't have to waste anything with the, uh, the Fuse One. We've cleaned our parts in the recovery station. Yeah. We've sifted the unused powder right. down into a cartridge. We bring the cartridge over here. Now what are we doing? Yeah, so this is our powder mixing station. So these cartridges really make it a lot easier to deal with powder. Uh, you have cartridges that are full of used powder or new powder, mm -hmm. and then you can mix those together using this station. So used powder goes here, new powder goes here. You start this up, and then uh, the powder goes through a mixing process and ends up in another cartridge. And then you put that cartridge on top of the printer, uh, and you're good to go. And so if uh, you, I'm guessing you don't want to use 100% used powder, you want to do a mix of used and new. Yeah, depending on what you are trying to do with your parts, uh, you can have different amounts of used powder. So okay. you might want 50-50, which is what we typically print with, but maybe you want to do you know, all new powder for some reason, or perhaps you really want to reuse uh, your powder more aggressively. And usually this will just impact like the surface finish of the parts. You'll okay. still get the same strength. But if you're trying to do detailed models, you might want to have a little bit less used powder in your mix. Got it. Yeah. All right, Eduardo, we're gonna let's we're gonna take a look at some more prints here. Sure. Uh, one of the questions that I think we should answer for the, the audience out there is that with like uh, the Form Two, other three D printing technologies, there is more post curing that you have to do. So like with the resins, you have to do a UV cure on them. With the SLS, is there any other than cleaning them? What do you need to do? That's really all you have to do to be able to use the parts. There are a lot of things you can do to SLS parts. You can dye them, you can media blast them, you can polish them. All that stuff is possible, but in order to start using the parts, you don't have to do any of that. So just you don't get need to the powder post curing or any right. kind of chemical bath, none of that. You just have to brush it off or blast it off of the air and it's ready to go. Cool. Yeah. And, and I'm noticing, so we got a lot of different things. We've looked at the yeah. gauntlet and the pedal. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm noticing here we got a, a different color. What's up with right. this? Yeah, so this is a nylon 11. Most of the gray parts you're seeing here are nylon 12. Uh, the difference there is is really mostly just the amount of elongation that the material has. So I'm nylon, noticing. <laughs> yeah, nylon 11 is so flexible that you can actually print individual pages in books. That's a flip book that <laughs> we designed. Amazing. And, printed. and then you can print things like these springs and it's just very springy and flexible. It's great for um, a lot of stuff that maybe you'd want to put on your body, for instance, yeah, if you were yeah. doing, you know, like a set of goggles or some headphones or something like that, that'd be a great thing to print in nylon 11. And the 12 is just really strong and resilient. So they both have their benefits, but there's a little bit of flexibility here with the process. Are both going to be available at launch or what? Are, yeah, what are we're planning to ship both of these at launch. We'll be focused on 12 initially, because that's the most common uh, nylon that people SLS print parts with. Yeah, um, so but, this guy? Yeah, so the gray stuff first, and then the 11 will come eventually. It might be at the same time, but we're still working out our plans for materials development. So a lot of times I know you see the uh, a lot of the SLS nylon parts are in a white that and right. you can dye them yeah. uh, different colors. Is that a possibility or? It could be a possibility. The okay. reason these are so dark is uh, actually because of the laser that we talked about. So since our wavelength of our laser is 1064 nanometers, that's mm -hmm. in like the near infrared, which is pretty close to visible. And uh, in order to absorb the energy from the laser, the lower cost laser that we have in the machine, you need to have darker materials so they absorb all that energy. Makes that's sense. part of the reason that we're able to have such an inexpensive solution for SLS printing. Great. Yeah. So what else do we have here? What is this little guy? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a design that uh, one of the engineers on the team made, Brian Chan. Uh, he's designed a lot of the cool stuff, including this gauntlet. 
and this is again printed as one part and then we added this little really? motor onto it <laughs> yeah and uh, if we plug that in you can actually see it walk across the table oh yeah let's uh, let's get that no going. problems yeah, adam would love this it's a great little part <laughs> yeah i really impressed with that thing yet another example this is right out of the printer. yeah chains right out of the printer uh, no need for assembly uh, you're just good to go it, as soon as you pull I, it out i love that it. it even has this yeah latch. a little clasp right that's amazing yeah well you're not gonna get on your bike otherwise no, no. <laughs> um cool then we've got like this, this crab here so this is printed by uh by brian chan who designed the other crab and mm -hmm. just incredibly delicate features that you can do with sls printing the thing i like about this is we have you know it's like a housing for a drill or something yeah. this is strong enough and durable enough you could just use this right you could up. just use it yeah. um because that one of the disadvantages of 3d printing a lot of time is like it's great for prototyping it's good for the detail but in the long term the materials may not always hold up right. like you would want them to exactly but this is like this is good to go yeah it's tough it's durable it has great uh, chemical and environmental resistance you can put it outside and uv and it won't get too brittle uh, it's, it's a great material great I've done some SLS printing in the past. Now, it's always been, the one interesting thing about the SLS, there's not a lot of SLS machines out there. Right, exactly. Um, EOS is the big one that probably everybody knows, Shapeways uses them. Uh, and I've printed a few things. This is one of my prints, so I sent this yep. to you guys. This yeah. is my Buck Rubon's iJet car. Yep. And uh, so we sent it as a test print. I am blown away. I've printed this over and over again. All the detail turned out great. All the wall thicknesses are right on, it's strong. And this is kind of like, it's got a lot of stuff that is a good uh, guide for how well it prints because it's a, it's a tough print, yep. just as it is because of it's how complex it is and how many angles. So check right there because we've got all the support, uh, a lot of detail on the back and everything. But like things like the tire treads, even this stuff came out. And like when that comes out, I know we're doing good. Yeah, <laughs> no, we've worked really hard to get the, uh, the detail on this to meet or exceed the level that you'd get from uh, 200,000 or million dollar SLS printer, uh, all for you know, just under $10,000 for the Fuse one. Yeah, so I brought along as a comparison, this is my Shapeways yeah. EOS print. Yep. And I gotta say side by side, it holds up extremely well. Yeah. So this is, this is one of the ones that was dyed yeah, nylon right. or exactly. whatever. Yeah, and uh, I, the, the, detail, the details just are spot on. Eduardo, thank you for the tour of the Fuse one. We look forward to getting one and tested. Yeah, I can't wait to get you guys we got, one. I, we got some plans for some good. stuff to print. Now, what's the cost of a system and right. when do you expect to have these out? Yeah, so we're going to be starting reservations for the Fuse One today. So you can reserve one and get your place in line. Okay. Uh, the Fuse One printer is going to start at uh, $9,999. And then if you want the entire system together, which includes Recover, some material to get you started, the mixing station, all those things, that's going to be uh, $19,999. Okay. So we'll start shipping beta units at the end of this year, mm -hmm. and then we'll be shipping more widely next year. Great. Yeah. And just and to be clear, this is the type of thing, if you're doing like mass production, like had a lot of these, you'd buy the, the processing stations as like, you probably need one of those. Yeah, you'd probably only need one of those for every several printers. And then, right. and then additional printers to go with that. Right, exactly. Right. Eduardo, thank you again for showing us around the Fuse One. We're really looking excited getting one in-house and trying it out. Uh, this is Sean from Tested at Form Labs HQ. Tune in next time for more Form Labs stuff.